Hello again. Now we will add a title to the image. So let's go. Uh, at first I'd like to um, hide the boundary, layer boundary. So I select view, show layer boundary off. Okay. And then I take the text tool uh, you can find it here, the letter A, and then you click somewhere, perhaps near where you want the text to um, be, and then you write. You can change the font by uh, selecting all the text. You can select it also uh, by clicking Ctrl A, select all. And now from the left hand side palette, you can uh, click on this white AA and choose the font you like. Okay, that's good. And then you can change some settings here in the small dialog box or you can change uh, them here in the left hand side uh, text tool palette. So for a, a bigger font you can click here and you can try also these other tools. As you can see here in the layer palette GIMP created a new layer for the title and uh, you can move the layer by choosing the move tool here and now I would like to change the color of the font so I choose again the text tool and click and uh, press ctrl A and here you can change the color of the text. So I want to make it yellow. So I choose yellow and press OK. Uh, now it's not very clear so I would like to have a shadow. I will do that by duplicating the uh, text layer by right clicking uh, and choosing duplicate layer. So now we have two layers here and then I want to change the color to black so I click with the text tool and press Ctrl A. And I change the color to black. Okay. Now I want to move this uh, shadow layer so I select the move tool and I drag the layer down a little bit and then I want to get this shadow layer behind the original text so I go here and drag the layer behind the text and now I can change the opacity of the shadow I go here and drag this slider, for example, like that. But the shadow layer is still too sharp. So I go and uh, select the filters menu, blur and Gaussian blur. And as you see, it changed there and you can change the amount of blurring here but I think that original was uh, good enough so I press OK and now I take the move tool and I want to move the text to a different position but I was not able to drag both layers on the same time so I undo 
and I have to chain the two layers together. So I choose one layer and between the eye and the layer name I click and get the chain. And then I click uh, at the other layer too. So now the two layers are chained. And now when I go and drag, so they both uh, follow. And I still could add a background here to the text. So I go and add a new empty layer. It's done here. And here I can change the name of the layer. But as I have done this before, so I have this text background text here. So I click OK. Now I have an empty layer there. So I go and select the rectangle select tool and I go and uh, draw a rectangle. And now I want to put some color in it. So I will change the color here. I will take some uh, darker yellow and OK. And now I need the bucket fill tool. It's here. I take it and then I go and click somewhere inside the rectangle like that. Now I need to get uh, this background uh, behind the text. So I go here to the layer palette and uh, press left mouse button, keep it down and drag the layer behind the text layers. So there it is. And now I can uh, change also the opacity of this layer. And I can do more. I can go and add some filters. Let's try the artistic apply canvas. So, okay, I think that's good. Okay. And now I can, uh, well, I have to chain this too, because otherwise uh, it goes like this. So I chain it. And now I can drag it wherever I want. I will place it here in the upper left hand side corner. And then I save it. So now it's saved in a GIMP format. And now I'd like to export this final image as a JPEG. So I go here to file menu and select export. And uh, here GIMP um, offers PNG, but I would like to save it as JPEG. So I have to go and select the file type here. I scroll down till I find the JPEG. I select it and then I click export. And it seems like I have this uh, file already there. So I press re replace. And now I have to choose uh, the quality of the JPEG image. Uh, there is no exact rule for this. But the bigger the number here, the better the image quality. And on the other hand, the smaller the number, the smaller is also the image size and the quality gets poor. So let's choose something, for example, 80% and then export. 
And now let's see what we have. Here it is. Okay, now we're ready. We have the image in JPEG format that can be used in web pages, blogs, and almost everywhere. Uh, thanks for watching. See you.